Good evening. Before we get started, I want to share you something about this guy. You all know him, right? Macron, or King Emmanuel, like he was called in the media this week. Uh, he's smart, he's handsome, just like his wife. She's smart, she's handsome, and together they're going to save France. Now, I'm sure you all heard the stories about how they met. So they were high school sweethearts, or he was in high school, she was his teacher. Um, there's not a lot of pictures about that period, but uh, I found this one. So we see Brigitte, uh, and we see her husband, and uh, we see Emmanuel. Now, this picture is a bit disturbing, right? So the question that pops up is, hey, isn't he too young to be with that lady? And what about this husband? Did he know about it? When was this picture taken, actually? It's weird because it's fake. This is the real picture. So the guy next to Brigitte isn't her husband. It's a colleague of her. Uh, and it's not Emmanuel in the picture. It's some other colleague. Um, this is not a real, really innocent Photoshop. There's actually some um, evil people behind this picture uh, that wanted to stir up some emotions. And they, they succeeded because this picture, when it went viral on social media, there was a lot of hatred, a lot of uh, people expressing disgust. Uh, and it's not the, 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 this one time that this happened. We, um, uh, we've been confronted these last couple of weeks um, with news about foreign uh, people interfering with democracy in elections and trying to manipulate uh, people. And it's frightening. One of the architects of this system um, went as far as to say, hey, we broke something great. Uh, because why are those people able uh, to manipulate us? Is because we are operating in a huge network. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, uh, and we are sharing stuff. Now, he said this beautiful thing, Facebook, that was made to connect people and to increase friendships, uh, we made something terrible out of it. We created a monster, we unleashed a, a, a terrible monster of Frankenstein, and now we're not able to put it back. So is it the system? Um, actually, no. And this is where, according to me, it gets even more frightening. Because researchers at MIT discovered that it's not actually the robots that um, are the reason why fake news spread fast, spreads faster. It's actually us, the humans, because we like it more. Uh, maybe do the test, which, act, which story did you like more, the perfect picture or uh, the one, the negative one, where we wondered about these sexual relationships? Was that okay? Was that legal? So it's not the robots, it's us humans. So the question is, who is the real monster? Is it the people that created the system, like Zuckerberg? <laughs> or is it you guys and me? And if it's us, what should we do about it? Should we maybe delete our Facebook account, like Elon Musk did for his company? Or should we go off the grid and go live in the woods uh, with no technology? Or should we just join the bad guys and do like them, do like Cambridge Analytica? What I want to tell you today is that there is another way. I want to show you how the network works and how you can use it to create a better world and to master the maze. Who remembers the Ice Bucket Challenge? So who was like those guys who, who participated in the Ice Bucket Challenge? Raise your hands. That's not, not a lot of people. OK, all right. OK, so you all know the, the, uh, the challenge. And um, people, were, when this went viral, people were wondering, hey, how come this happens? Uh, and a lot of explanations uh, uh, explained that it was because it was for a good cause, for instance 
or that it was because it was a fun action. We've never seen anything like it before. Uh, but actually, a lot of good causes happen every day, and a lot of fun stuff goes around on the internet. Actually, what this guy says about it uh, is more interesting. He's a mathematician, and what he's, he studied um, um, trends like Harry Potter, for instance, but also how uh, the Berlin Wall fell. And what he discovered is that it's not especially about the thing itself, but it's about the network. It's about how a stimulus uh, enters the network. And what he shows is that, he says like this, well, like you see in this picture, it shows uh, how people are interacting on a conference like this one. So we all come here, we don't know uh, each other, but then we start interacting, uh, we start sharing on Twitter, on Facebook, and this uh, big world that we thought we lived in is actually a very small world because I'm connected to my network, but the people in my network are also connected to their network. And that way we are a ring linked to a lot of people uh, across the globe. Why is this network so important? It's because the people around us control our minds. Let's say you're stepping on a plane tomorrow to New York and the guy or the girl next to you buys a video. Chances are, by, the chances are raised by 30% that you will buy a video too, just because the guy or the girl next to you buys a video. Let's say you have a, a friend who starts growing a beard, and you're a guy. Let's say you have three friends, and uh, Jean, let's call him Jean, Jean starts growing a beard. The chances are that you will start growing a beard too, now, so say in the second um, uh, example, let's say you have a, a much huger network of friends and Jean is only one of them. You have 20 friends. Jean starts growing a beard. You'll probably say, hey, I know this guy was crazy uh, from the start, so I'm not starting to grow a beard. What this shows and what Duncan Watts explains is it's not about growing the beard. It's about how your network is formed and how your network uh, determines what you do. So this is actually an interesting uh, example from a Dutch photographer. Uh, she asked two types of guides, guides, guys with beards uh, to get in front of her camera. So there's the Muslim guys and there's the hipsters. She asked them to switch clothes, uh, and at the end we don't know who's whom. But this shows that it's not really about, there's nothing special about growing a beard, right? Uh, if those two groups of people start growing beards, it's because they're very tight communities. Hipsters are a tight community and Muslims are a tight community. So we're very much influenced by our network. And that's a first takeaway I want to give with you. Be aware of this. Try to know who influences you and what kind of people uh, they are. Now that's rather passive, right? Uh, let's look at what you can do, you. And here is some other interesting guy, Adam Grant. He did some research on how we are and interact as people. And he came up with three kinds of people. He said, hey, there's givers, there's takers, and there's matchers. The givers are typically the people that share their notes after a course, and they don't mind. They give them away to everyone. The takers are the ones that take things. They feel entitled, they think everyone, everything is made for them. Most of us are matchers. Uh, matchers, uh, they give stuff now and then, but they expect something uh, in return. Now, and here it gets really interesting, uh, there was, uh, Adam Grant did some research, uh, or used some research that was done in Belgium, actually with med medical students. So he tried to look at those um, uh, students and follow them throughout their academic career. And he tried to find out who was most successful. Now here's a question for you guys. I want to do a pop quiz uh, later on. So who do you think was more successful? The givers, the matchers, or the takers? Let's do the test. All right. Who thinks the givers are most successful? OK. Who thinks the takers were more successful? Okay. And who thinks the matchers are most successful? 
All right. So it's, I, I believe most of you think that the givers were more successful, and part of you think that the matchers uh, were more successful. It's a bit nuanced. So first, uh, during the first years, it was the takers that were more successful. Um, now, what we saw is during their academic um, uh, path, uh, towards the end of the, of the curriculum, when they had to interact more, get internships, in, uh, exchange with other people, we saw that the, that the givers were more uh, successful. Uh, now, Adam Grant explains why that is. He says it's normal. Um, it's because matchers go out of their way uh, to create, uh, to do something extra for the givers. Uh, and of course, uh, like some VC uh, guy said, it's easier uh, to win if everybody wants you uh, to win. So this is a, another uh, lesson in life. Uh, try try to, to think of giving and not always take. So in short, what do you want you to take away from this? Think of the network. Think uh, of this huge world we live in, but think of it as a small world because everything you will do uh, to the network will come back to you. Uh, try to think of the people who influence you, but try to be an influencer yourself. Try to give uh, things, don't take things. It's like JFK said, don't think of uh, what your country or other people can do for you, but try to think of what you can do for other people. Because at the end, and that's most important, the network will always try to balance things out. It's like the North, the, the network always remembers. <laughs>